sometimes when you're trying to make that transition, you're on two surfboards, but you can't ride them both at the same time. It's impossible. How many years was it between showing at Sundance mm -hmm. and getting your first television directing job? So I went to Sundance in January of 2001. I booked my first episode of television in April of 2017. Oh, wow. Yeah. Okay. So that would be 16 and a quarter years. But you were active in film and television. You worked at NYU for mm -hmm. a while. Yeah, I mean, that whole time. So to, to anyone, everyone watching and listening, I never stopped being a filmmaker. And I think, you know, that's part of what I try and touch on in the book. Like you're, you have to define yourself. You have to claim what you, what you are and who you are. And so while I, I worked a desk job at NYU, I was assistant production coordinator. I was signing forms for the students to go get film and, you know, uh, rent equipment or here's a voucher to go to Kodak or whatever. I was this, I was the signature toward other younger folks' dreams. <laughs> you know, um, I answered a million questions at the window because they would come to our window and, and get this information and I would, you know, give uh, unsolicited advice or you know, it became sought after. People would kind of know that I had a real world skill that I could kind of impart and offer to them. Um, I was, you know, I had my production company during this time. I had a podcast. Um, you know, I was making things. I, I won a competition at Tribeca for a heist screenplay that I co wrote in 2008. Um, I wrote a bunch of screenplays I thought I might sell that I never did. And so <clears throat> all of that time, I was still creating, trying to, I had a, I had a, I had a target on feature filmmaking um, because that was what I had gotten into this game to do, you know? Um, and over time, you know, this landscape was changing. It was the, 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 the types of films that I was kind of interested in making were becoming uh, obsolete because everything was coming from some other intellectual property, like a comic book or an amusement park ride, like Pirates of the Caribbean, you know? And like $20 million films, $10 million films were kind of disappearing. And what I was noticing was a lot of the people that I wanted, that I was inspired by that made those films were moving to TV. Because that's where there was more, uh, there was a, 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 a higher need, there, they needed more, they needed more content. Um, and the filmmakers that were kind of sent to the wayside by the new mandate and, and features were going over to TV and saying, well, I'd love to tell that kind of story. And obviously all ushered in by Sopranos and the Golden Age and watching these interesting characters find exploration episode after episode, season after season. And so um, for, yeah, I think from like, 09 until 2017, I had a pretty, pretty dedicated focus on trying to get into TV. Um, but it took some time before I was able to kind of put it all together. Did you ever feel this sort of common thing that someone took your chance? You know, I see it in our comments mm -hmm. and, and I can understand why people get angry. Mm -hmm. But did you ever feel that at times? No, I just felt, I never thought, I never felt like someone took my chance. I. I was constantly trying to find the cocktail that would work for me to get the opportunity. And, you know, what was clear, and I'm a person who went through four director programs that um, the studios and the networks were compelled to put together um, because the hiring was so um, clearly angled in one direction. Um, you know, I just felt like, well, how do I get access to the people, you know, who were making these decisions? I felt like that would be the big, that I knew that that was the biggest hurdle. 
And so that that hurdle was either making something that people could see and doing that as often as possible um, to give myself as many shots as possible. And then also um, discovering these programs where you would get to learn how television was made and be included in these cohorts and these units that were um, selected to help bridge the gap between, you know, 93% of the directors being hired being white males and 7% encompassed everyone else. Um, and so those pipelines were helpful in kind of meeting the folks, learning how TV was made, and then, um, you know, hopefully shining enough to, to get the opportunities. Did anybody sit you down and say, Pete, I know you mean well, but like, why don't you, have you thought about going to law school? <laughs> no, no, no. Bright guy, no? Nobody ever okay. sat me down or tried to send me in another direction. I, you know, I feel like I was, I never had, I always had people share, maybe not the, 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 the strength of belief in me, but I feel like everybody in my world believed in me because it was clear that I was being very thoughtful about it. It wasn't like, you know, I didn't have like delusions of grandeur of like what it was going to take from me to get in the industry. Um, I was informed on how it worked. Um, when I met a roadblock, I tried to hop up to 10,000 feet and look at it and then say, well, what can I learn from this and how can I pivot? You know, which is kind of the whole like through line of the book. You know, it's like there's these, you're gonna, you're gonna have your, everybody's gonna have their own journey and their own story, but like you're gonna find opportunities in these challenges and, and you have to challenge yourself to respond with your goal in mind and not with your emotion and not with your, you know, you know anything else. Is this your quote right here, Pete? Uh, yeah, I said it. May I, I'll take ownership. I know maybe someone else has said it somewhere in the world, but yeah, if you ride the wave long enough, the tide always turns. And what does that mean? To me, that just is, it, it means a lot of things. I, and it's funny, I have a lot of water metaphors. Uh, like in the book, I talked about being a yacht you know, in the road to getting your first job, you're like this luxury yacht that doesn't have a slip to dock. And you're trying to build enough awareness in the marina for people to offer you a slip so you can get off the boat and walk on land, you know. Um, and then another one that I, I say often is, um, you know, sometimes when you're trying to make that transition, you're on two surfboards, but you can't ride them both at the same time. It's impossible. And the reality of that is you're gonna to have to choose which one you're gonna get on. You can't ride them both. You're gonna to have to pick one and step off of one in order to get to where you're going. And so, you know, this quote, if you, if you ride the wave long enough, the tide always turns, um, is speaking to the idea of, you know, for those of you who are trying and have been trying to go after a singular goal, um, I can't remove being self-aware. You know, I can't remove being, um, uh, you know, being smart about the business and uh, being open to feedback. But if you take those three things and include that as kind of the back, the back end of this of this quote, I think that over a long enough timeline with those three things um, powering you, you'll find your opportunities. Can it mean though that there can also be a reversal of fortune? Yeah, I think I think exactly. There can definitely be a reversal. You can, it, you know, if you're seeing, you know, hit after hit after hit, or, you know, everybody loves everything you do every time that you release it or you do it, it's, probably going to come a time where it's not going to be as well received. Um, and then at that point, you know, I think then it just flips to the other side <laughs> and then you figure out how to, how to get out of that situation. But, um, 
you know, what do they say? Even a broken clock is right two times a day. You know, like it's just, I, I, I've found over my journey that having things that remind me of, um, it's not destiny or it's not predetermined or it's not like, you know, um, I'm not in some kind of, I can't think of the word I'm looking for. Um, I'm not in some kind of like career purgatory. You know what I mean? Like there's ways to navigate the downtimes. Um, and most of it's going to be about having a positive attitude. 